Hello everybody and welcome back. Right, I've decided to plant out my aeoniums. They are tender plants, but famous last words. I think now we'll be very unlucky for going to a frost. So it's a calculated risk, but I think they should be fine now. It's like the 20th of May. So we'll be very surprised if we've got any more frost. Right, so aeoniums. Some people like them, some people don't. I love them, I think they're great little plants. I've had these ones for a lot of years now. And for me, on my stony, dry, really well drained, quite poor soil, they do really well. It's the ideal conditions for them. They're like a spot in full sun. I mean, this at the minute this bed is in full sun, but another hour or so and it will be. It'll have full sun for the rest of the day, so a good, good six, seven hours of sun in here. And I did, I put them all in this bed last year because I didn't really know what to do with it. So I put all my, I just put all my aeoniums in here, and I thought on mass when they all get going in the summer, it looked really good. So obviously I've got my washing tone here in here in the pot. And then I've got a little salvia amistad just coming back. The Volcano Palm. Perscaria Purple Fantasy here. This Zebrinus grass and the banana and uh, just emerging ginger. So I think they're all mixing really well. And I've got a big, big lily as well back there. So yeah, I thought it looked really good, all on mass last year. Really was impressed with it. They did thrive in this area. So I've decided to plant it again. To be fair, what I'm actually waiting for here is my Treptopanax to pull. I'm going to put a Treptopanax in here. Because I think at the minute, I'm obviously, this big Aeonium does go over the Persecaria in the grass, but they'll be fine, they'll grow through that. I'm not expecting the palm to put much growth on this year. Obviously all these aeoniums will be dug up in the winter. So on winter protection then, they are tender plants, they do need to be dug up. They won't survive sat outside. And for what I know, there's three different ways of doing it. So what I did with this one and this one is I dug them up and put them in a pot with soil, kept it dry, kept it in the greenhouse and I'll just say in the greenhouse, I bubble wrap the windows, well, bubble wrap the old greenhouse inside of the greenhouse. And I've got a little pan of finiting in there, which all it does really is just take the edge off. I know last winter, which we had some really cold spells. I went in there one morning, it was minus three. Uh, but they were fine. So you can dig them up, put them in a pot. And sometimes what I do is I dig them up, dig them up, wash all the soil off the roots and just put them in a pot with no soil. Or you can even just snip off there and just bang all that in a pot with no soil. All of them, I've, I've, I did all three methods this year and all survived. Well, not every Aeonium that I've wanted survived. Some did die, I lost more than what I've ever lost before because I had, I had loads last year. I'll show you in a minute how to propagate them. But yeah, I can't really explain why some of them died off, because they were sat next to each other, some of them, and one died and one didn't. So I think it would just look. So yeah, that's how I went. And you can just uh, chuck them all into one big pot. If you're low on space, I mean, potting them up, obviously you need the space to... Because they do come out a lot better after being potted up. But it's just having the space, which I, I haven't really got in the greenhouse. So I, I've dug, I dig up the best ones, put them up, and then rest of them, just put them all into a little pot, or a big pot. Just as, as long as they're not laid on top of each other, really, I find that they're, they're pretty fine. Right, so propagating. Really easy to propagate. Oh, and any of these little rosettes that you see, you can just cut them off, pot them up, or at this time here, just put them straight in the ground. Or I could take one of these long stems off, 
they do have like little roots that come off and when you put these in they'll root up pretty quick so you can have I mean I could get loads of plants off this one this is the one that's flowered so again I don't know if this will die or just that bit I'm not sure I'll have to wait and see on that if I st see it starting to die I will take loads of cuttings off this see this one here this this is actually snapped so I'll take that off and just stick it in the ground oh, so pretty much that is all you have to do stick it in the ground that'll do fine I will put that in a bit better in a minute but yeah so propagation is really easy you can I mean I bought I think two plants and now I've got all these and some of them when they come out of winter look pretty good a few they do drop the leaves when they get a bit stressed and the leaves do turn red the leaves are supposed to be green on these you can see this, they've been out either and off and the leaves have started to green up now but some of them do come out like this but if you've got a little bit of live on the end it should be fine this one hasn't got any of on it but the stem is firm so I'm just going to try that and they do end up like this sometimes with a lot of bare trunk and then the leaves on the end which I prefer a firm like that so I could just cut these off and then put them in sometimes you get little branches like this that's got a little bit of green on so I'll put them in oh, I like that one which I might have to take these off because if you can see it's still alive here but not not there so I'll probably will have to cut these bits off and you can see it's starting to root here so we can take this off and put it in from this point it'll be fine there again you see it's dying back here but this end bit is still alive so that's probably what I'll have to do with it so yeah if you've got really poor soil or really well drained soil and you're wanting to almost use these as bedding plants you can do that definitely what I do I've got one in a pot but they don't seem to do as well in a pot you see this gone really red really distressed this one but it is greening up now so yeah I think they are better off in the ground if you're willing to overwinter them I mean you could just leave them out and let them die off but then you won't have them for next year so yeah that's that's the Ionians great little plants I think I don't know the species of these I forgot that a long time ago so I couldn't tell you there's, there's all sorts you can get all sorts of different types now though very readily available now so yeah, I just wanted to show you my Aeonian bed and share why I think they're great little plants for the garden. Little succulent plants, really well suited to the drought conditions that we're probably going to get in a lot now. Right, thanks for watching, bye.